As a first video in this new year, I have a rehouse for you and it will be a very special rehouse. And it will be special mostly because of the spider in this very cup. In here I have a... let me show you. You should figure it out immediately. As you see, empty enclosure, nothing inside. But if you look closely, you can spot a lines of silk, a fine lines of silk. And those, those are three wires of a trapdoor spider. So that is first reason why this is going to be a very special rehouse. Second reason is I have four tarantulas that we are going to rehouse in these four tubs. And the reason why it's special, this is Nandu, this is Nandu, this is Nandu, this is Nandu. All four are from Nandu genus, these two are Nandu Chromatus, this one is Nandu Tripepi, and this one is Nandu Coloratovillosus. I hope I pronounced it right. So we are going to rehouse them. First, we are going to make an enclosure for trapdoor spider because my supply of, as I said in the last rehouse video, my supply of substrate is kind of limited. So I'm not 100% sure if I will have enough substrate for, for all four of these and the trapdoor spider. So first I want to make a setup for trapdoor spider because that is the most important rehouse. And then we are going to rehouse those to see if we will have enough. So yeah, I will close the trapdoor off. He probably won't, wouldn't escape, but better safe than sorry, right? And this is actually all Linda's enclosure, so I already have background. And even though she kind of destroyed, started destroying the background, this will be under the substrate, so it is not a problem. So I'm just going to set up the camera, put a lot of substrate inside, uh, put some, some additional stuff, and yeah, then we will continue with other stuff. And also I will explain it why I'm going to use this really big enclosure, definitely much bigger than its current cup. <laughs> there is a very special reason for that. In nature, these trapdoor spiders, they make their hide on a slopey terrain. So in order to have a slope in the enclosure, the enclosure needs to be much bigger than the actual size of the enclosure that a tarantula of that size would need. So that's the reason why, to create a slope. A nice little slope. Let's see if this is enough. I think that this should do the trick, but I will compress the substrate a bit more. And somewhere up here, I'm going to make like a starter burrow. So hopefully the, the spider will actually start to make its trapdoor right there. And there is also a special reason why I want a spider to make a trapdoor at uh, some specific location. The reason for that is I want to make like a time lapse of, of spider making a trapdoor. And in order to do that I, I need to make sure that I'm recording the right location. Right? It makes all sense. By the way, I'm adding a bit of sand for the texture, you know, and some leaf litter also for, for kind of better look. <laughs> and this would be it. Now you see, this is a slope and I think that it will be very nice for the spider. And there is the hole, so hopefully it will start doing a trapdoor right there. But you never know. And I think the overall enclosure, it looks nice. Nice, right? Nice, yeah. Now I will set the enclosure aside and we are going to uh, prepare enclosures for the Nandus. Actually, I will get them outside of their enclosure one by one as I'm making the enclosure because I want to reuse their current substrate. I definitely need it because this is all the substrate. I'm not sure if that will be enough. So I just need my trusty thingy and we can do this. This should be kind of simple with this species. I mean, they are a bit defensive and bolty and all that, but overall I might need two hands or... No, it will be fine. A bit of hair kicking, but that is also fine. I'm just going to set him aside. By the way, this is Nandu Coloratovillosus. We are starting with him and he should be a male indeed. I didn't sex him, but I assume that no one would tell you that the tarantula is a male if it assumes that it is a female, <laughs> right? Actually, kinda easier to fill it with substrate over there, right? And look, carapace, don't need that. And this time he will actually have a hide to hide, so not only that his enclosure is now bigger, but it also has a hiding space. So that is also very nice. Off we go. Mm. Yeah, I need two hands. Easier to maneuver like that. <laughs> what are we drunk? <laughs> poke poke. No, 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 no hair kicking, please. 
especially when you are getting bigger and nicer space to hang out. No, stop. And since in this video you are going to see all three different Nandu species up close, this is also going to be a nice comparison video. So you will be able to pick up your favorite Nandu. First contestant, Nandu Colorado Velosus. And he is actually strolling really nice. I like this. Maybe he figures out there is a hide now. Are you figuring that out? Nice dark place where you can hide. Or maybe you don't need that. Nando species are actually really bold, so they don't, they often don't hide. And this one is, no, 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 please don't do that. We are going to say bye to him and we are switching to next, next Nando species. By the way, you can notice that I'm not really using my hands here. The reason is Nando species are kind of similar like Akatuscuria geniculata. They can be really bitey, so I don't really want to risk that. In more than five years of me keeping tarantulas, I still haven't been bit, so I will try to continue that streak. This next Nando species, it is a Nando tripepi, and this one is also a male, but his current appearance should be the same as a female, because he is still not mature. Also the same thing, I will get him out, set up the enclosure and put him inside. Maybe I should first poke him out. Oh, you are actually calm, how come? Oh. Oh, I think that this guy is in a pre-molt. Look at his abdomen. Whoa. Yep, he should molt any time. So I'm usually it is not the best idea to to rehouse the tarantula in a pre-molt, but he's already too big for his enclosure. So he definitely needs an upgrade. Oh, he kicked so many hairs. Check this out. You see all of those hairs? He kicked them right now. <laughs> Crazy. I guess it is because of the pre-molt. They usually don't kick uh, such a high amount of hairs. Quickly enclosure. I will just dump everything, of course, and add new substrate. And also you can hear one cricket, right? Let me show you where he is. He's actually hiding in this stack of leaf litter. He's somewhere inside, so there is no way that I find him. Can you hear? He's somewhere there. I thought that maybe he's behind, but no, unfortunately he's somewhere inside. Yeah, he's a smart guy. Smart guy that knows how to hide <laughs> and be out of my reach. He's also getting a big piece of cork bark as a hide. There, it is set up. And now to move the guy. Oh, the hairs are falling off. I think that soon I will feel an itch. Now check this primo booty. <laughs> I mean, you really can't miss that. Whenever tarantula booty looks like this, it means pre-mold, but don't mix it up with tarantula that was kicking a lot of hairs and just got bald abdomen. Because that is not the sign. The sign is the actual color. You see... Whoa. Why are you kicking your hairs now, dude? Are you getting ready to mold, buddy? Well, now at least you have more space to do that. I'm sure that he will appreciate that. Now we are going to take the classic and the most common Nandu. And that is Nandu Chromatus. And as you can see, it looks really like uh, Acanthoscuria geniculata. The only reason is Nandu got a white carapace while Acanthoscuria geniculata got a black carapace. Besides that, they almost look identical. And from my experience, these are the most defensive and the boltiest. She'll probably bite this straw now. No, oh, you see? Crazy feeding response. And look, she's biting even more. Oh, she is not messing around. Let's go, let's go, no time to waste. Oh, uh -huh. hair kicking. For most tarantulas, hair kicking is a first line of defense. For Nandu, it is second. First bite, then ask questions. Come on. Why is she so difficult? There. Barely. I'm definitely feeling itchy. Not the best feeling, to be honest. Let's see if we will get more fang action or just hair kicking. Okay. Alright, it is fine for now. Okay. Easy. There we go. And now you can see the final Nando species. To be honest, I think that this one is kind of the, the prettiest because of the red hairs and white and black and you see white stripes on the black. Just overall combination is the prettiest in my opinion. Yeah, let's rehouse the final 
and that is also Nandu Chromatus. So I don't have any additional information, we're just going to rehouse it quickly. I mean first we need to get her out of course. And you see she's under the cork bark, so I need to remove that first. And she is not a fan of that. Let's see if we can get her to go outside on her own. And you see, unlike her sister... Oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Sorry about that, that wasn't intentional. I wanted to say, unlike her sister, she is not that bitey. In the cup you go, pretty please. Well, this was really funny. She had a surprise piece of substrate in her face. Pop, 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 pop. There. She is definitely more passive than her sister, and you can see how uh, same tarantulas, same tarantula species, uh, they are from the same exec and they act completely different. That is why you cannot just generalize how tarantula will act. Like, you know, when people ask which tarantula is good for handling, I mean, which tarantula is really calm. While my Gramostola rosea might be super calm, yours might be a, a true manifestation of evil. You can never know that. And now the rehouse that you are all waiting for. Not gonna lie, I'm also super excited about this rehouse. And to check out how deep this hide is and how it's constructed. Yeah, we are going to find that out. Tweezer and let's check out. Oh no, stop shaking. There is the tunnel. Oh, you can see my finger over there. So it goes all the way down and I can see the spider. I will try to remove this trap door. No, but I would like to take it as a hole. Ooh. Is the spider still down there? Yeah, it is. Just making sure. So this is a trap door. So cool. Check it out. Closed. Open. Closed. Open. <laughs> Sweet. I'm going to save this. Spider is now thinking, what the hell is happening? Where is my roof? Who stole my roof? But I'm hoping he will be satisfied when he spots his new enclosure. Yeah, I will try to poke him out. He's all the way down. I cannot really show you with the camera. He's on the very bottom of the enclosure. Let's see how we can do this. I'm going to place it like that. But I would prefer if you see what is happening. No. Oh, 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 oh. It bolted straight out and there it is. Thankfully they cannot climb glass so it should be safe in here. But the way it bolted it was oh crazy. <laughs> now how? I would like to poke him to get him to go inside of this but I'm kind of afraid that it will it will climb on the background and jump outside. So maybe I will get a box just in case. Then I can do whatever I want. So even if it bolts outside of the enclosure now, it cannot go outside of this box. That means that we can poke it. So we can see again how fast it is. Ooh, ignoring. Ooh. Okay, it was not that fast now. Oh, straight into the hole. Well, that is where I want you to go. Awesome, okay. Now I won't, I won't touch him anymore. I will set everything up and let camera record overnight. So hopefully now we are jumping into a time lapse.